Super excited to show you the NVIDIA RTX A6000. This is the latest GPU from NVIDIA using their new Ampere line. So this is an upgrade from the Titan RTX that I previously used on this channel. NVIDIA was kind enough to provide me with this GPU for use on my YouTube channel. So let's take a look. First, let's just look at the specs of this amazing card. The NVIDIA RTX A6000. So the CUDA cores is 10,000. I mean, that's a very, very fast card. But what really sets this apart from, say, something like a 3090 is the amount of memory. It has an amazing 48 gigabytes of RAM. Now, this is obviously a very high-end card. So what do you need? 10,000 CUDA cores, 336 tensor cores, and 48 gigabytes of memory for. This is definitely the type of card with its five to 6,000 US dollar range that would be used by a professional. Possibly has a company buying the computer for them or is working in an area of research. But still, what would you need that amount of memory for. Blazing SQL is definitely something that can use that. It uses the available memory on one or more GPUs essentially as cache as it's performing its SQL operations. Now you might think this amount of money for a graphics card is pretty expensive, but so is a Spark cluster if you're going to try to get this level of performance. And from some of the benchmarks I've seen, Blazing SQL can easily outperform Spark clusters definitely on a dollar per dollar basis. This is something I do want to look at with this card, so make sure to subscribe so you see videos as I apply this to some really advanced data science problems beyond just computer vision, but also computer vision, GANs, and other, other fascinating topics. All right, there's not a lot I can do for sort of an initial unboxing. This is definitely an early release. The box that I got from NVIDIA is essentially just the shipping container and inside it are really just two things. There is a power cable. So this takes a different type of cable than you normally had in the case. Normally you would use two 8-pin PCIe connectors, both of them going into the motherboard. We'll see that in a moment when I pop it into the case. I've already got one of these on order that, come, that goes right from my power supply to the NVIDIA card and much easier cabling on the inside. The other thing that was in the box is the actual GPU. Now you can see I'm wearing gloves. This might be overkill, but this is an expensive card and I'm thinking NVIDIA probably would not send me another one if I broke this one, but let's not find out. So here is the card. This is, there you can see the NVIDIA logo. It's got this really cool golden sort of radiator built into it. Cooling wise, you can see there's, there's really a single fan, but it comes out on both sides. So you can tell this is very much built to have these dents so that you would just stack them right next to each other and not have to space them more out like you would do the more GeForce sort of line of cards. Although the new 30 series has some very innovative cooling designs as well. This, you can definitely tell, is more of the blower sort of GPU. So this fan is going to pull air in. I'm guessing this is intake on both sides, but we will find that out when I actually pop it into the case. And it's going to thrust the air through the, through the radiator here and then out this grill that you see here. On the, the grill of it, the side that goes out of the computer, there are four DVI slots. No HDMI, which is very common for the more professional, the quadros were the same way. 
Now, if you get into like the A100s, there's just nothing here. It's just it's just the grill. It's the blower because it's meant to be mounted in a server room. You're not going to be putting a monitor on it. So let's take a closer look at this and get it plugged into my computer so that we can see what this baby can do. All right, let's pull this Titan out and put the new A6000 in. So I'm going to start by removing the power from the Titan. So that's out. Those will plug into this new adapter. All right. I mean, that's not too bad from a cable management perspective. So let's go ahead and pop the Titan out. I'm going to unscrew it. This is the part of taking a GPU out that is just never easy. There's these little clips that you have to unclip and you've got a big giant GPU in the way. I used to have a giant CPU cooler here. I switched to liquid cool for exactly that reason that I can get access to the clip without having this giant box there that was blocking access to my RAM. By the way, I upgraded the RAM to 128 gigabytes. Since this guy has 46 gigs of RAM on it, just the, the, the new GPU coming in, I don't want, I wanted to have ample host RAM space to actually use. So I'm, press, I'm pressing down on, let's see. Yeah, you press down. Mammoth GPU cards. So that's the Titan. And I am going to go ahead and put my gloves on before I do anything that I regret. So this is the Titan RTX, the previous card that I had here. These are the fans. So it's a open air cooling configuration. If we compare that to, it's about the same size as the A1000, really. This single sort of straight through fan, and by the way, this fan looks absolutely deadly. So be careful about potentially putting your finger in there because it's horrible for GPUs to have little pieces of finger throughout the, no, I'm kidding, you don't want to hurt your finger. So be, be very careful with that. That looks a lot more hard plastic than, than that would potentially get you. So these are the two side by side. I would say the A1000, the A6, I would say the A6000 is a bit more unassuming next to the, I do really like the, the golden radiator though. Put the Titan aside for now. And set this right down into here, just like this. All right, it's connected. I'm gonna lose the gloves. I don't think I'm gonna fry the screw. Okay, and it's in. And like I like I said before, this GPU is really meant for your workstation class machine. I mean, heavy duty engineering, data science, working very hard, day in and day out. So it's, it's not as much bling sort of from the side of the case as the Titan RTX. I mean, there's this little bitty RTX A6000 here and, and NVIDIA. This looks pretty cool though. I, I do like that. But often this will be buried inside of a OEM that you've purchased with, and you can easily put multiples of these. I could put another one. I might, I might even be able to get three of these into, into here. That is way more power than I would know what to do with. Now the NVLink is right here. I'm not gonna pop that out just to show the NVLink connector. I'm gonna leave this very much intact. And then here, I'm going to plug the power in. It goes into the side here. All right, we are fully connected. I'm gonna take my 4K, DVI and plug it into one of the available ports on the A6000. All right. We should be ready to power up. Everything is connected. That feels quite solid. There we go. It is. All right. I see the monitor coming in. Keyboards up. All right. 
the operating system has booted. So here you can see what I was greeted with when I booted with the new A6000. Basically my configuration had changed, so Microsoft, since I had BitLocker installed to protect my hard drive with encryption, they're not letting me pass until I enter my recovery key. You know, the recovery key, that text file that they offered you to generate when you encrypt a drive and you quickly delete it or forget where you put it? Or am I the only one who does that? Well, yeah, I did that here. So. What you need to do is go into your operating system and select BitLocker options for your encrypted drive, and it brings you to this. And then you have several options. You can suspend protection, and that protects you against hardware changes, because if I had broken that GPU and bought a replacement for it, I don't think even buying the same GPU would help, because it would detect that it's a different one. And I would have basically probably lost my data to that hard drive. Now, I have multiple backup systems, so it would have been just an annoyance rather than anything else. But nonetheless, a little scary. If you're going to be changing GPUs a lot, I might consider that. You can also re-back up your key, basically print it out. This is what I did just so that I can now go and enter it into the computer. Sadly, I had to pull the A6000 back out and put the Titan back in. I was, I was really, really annoyed at that. But now let's continue. Okay, so I have successfully now restarted the computer. The A6000 is there and running. Let's put the drivers on. This is a real quick process. NVIDIA has me choose the type of driver that I want to download. I'm choosing NVIDIA RTX Quadro, NVIDIA RTX Series, NVIDIA RTX A6000, Windows, etc. I'm going to also dual boot this into Linux, so you'll, you'll see that happening in future videos, not in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. NVIDIA already has my information, so I am going to skip and continue to download, agree, and download. And this takes a moment. We'll just fast forward through the download. Okay, let's open up the driver, and yes, we'll let it run. Okay, we'll fast forward through this. I shall agree and continue. Express is good. And we'll fast forward through this part. All right, driver is done. So I'm going to do a quick example just to show that the GPU is up and running. It's so nice of Docker to tell me that it has started. If everything told me when it was started, it'd be a long boot up. Okay, so let's uh, get into the right directory. All right, and let me activate TensorFlow. This is just following on my GPU installation instructions for that are also on, on YouTube. So I will do Jupyter Notebook. Open up this. This is just the example from my dual GPU example. The last time I ran it, it had the dual Quadro 8000 system on it. So let me go ahead and run it on this one and see what the results are. It should detect the NVIDIA RTX A6000 that I have installed now. All right, that is done. You can see the RTX A6000 and it's got 44 gigabytes of RAM. It just all depends on how you round that. All right, here is the finished computer in full RGB glory. So I will be doing a number of videos using this new hardware, the A6000. We will install the later versions of TensorFlow that actually have the extensions needed for it, and I'll look at it with PyTorch as well. Also looking at doing some really fun stuff with NVIDIA StyleGAN 2 ADA. So subscribe to the channel and don't miss out. Thank you very much for watching.